All right, we are live, finally. We were supposed to have a guest on, but somebody can't figure out how to work StreamYard and get their I mean, phone working. you said it best, correctly. boomers and technology. Yeah. It's, you it, could always it, just be here in voice if it's a webcam thing. No, it's he doesn't have a webcam. It's his phone. Mm. And he's like, that's all One he's got. One of those. Yeah, oh. For sure. One of those. Yeah, it's too bad Mike A dropped out, but I get it. He's not feeling good. Oh, yeah. Good. He ain't feeling good. It's just how you got to be. Yeah, man. Like, he's he's got that shit that's going around. Like, I've I've heard the a lot of The new COVID or whatever? <laughs> it's, Jesus Christ. It's just the, it's the, the seasonal shit. The crud. Yeah. Right in spring yeah, and fall, COVID's it usually happens. Right, you get the cold, you got the flu, and you got COVID twenty three. <laughs> of course. So, yeah. um, yeah. So Mike's got a bad head cold, and he was gonna COVID. make it, but he's like, I can't fucking do it. He's yeah, gonna die. die. Shut your fucking cock holster, you fucking what? whatever. <laughs> um, but uh, there's a lot of people that I know right now that are like sick with this shit that's going around. I'm like, it's just a matter of time. <laughs> I just got over with it a couple weeks ago. Yeah, it was pretty rough. Yeah, it's going around. So I'm just hoping, like, because I'm such a recluse. That'll, that'll hope, buy you some time at least. Hopefully it'll buy you some time or just get it avoided. Give it it's entirely. Like, it's every fucking year. Like, that's the thing. Yeah, is like, I don't think people... I don't, this, this time of the year. It, well, it people don't cold. understand before 2020, people got sick literally every fucking year. Yeah. When I was in college, there was a dude that, like... We were in a history class and he came in and he sat down right next to me and he's just like doing the whole Yeah. And the the, the the professor was like, Are you sick? He goes, Yeah, I think so. She goes, Then go home. Like go back to your dorm. Like, don't come to class if you're sick. You're not gonna you're not gonna retain anything and you're gonna get everybody else sick. And it's like, yeah, just like go home. And so he did. And I was like right next to him and I didn't get sick. And I was like, Whew. Score, but yeah, but, it's 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 just this time of the year every year, people start getting. Sick. Oh yeah, it's it, it's fall. It's like getting well, it's in, when like, school starts getting back together. This is when people all summer people stay by them like cells or every every little gatherings and parties or whatever for the most part. But like this is now when people are like getting back to school, and then their kids are all fucking together, you know, and shit like that. And they bring everything home. That's what it is. This is when now all of that crap is. Coming together and then going back home. Yeah, but it's also just like just seeing people in like convenience stores and whatever. It's like, dude, there's illnesses going around all the fucking time, man. Like, yeah, all year round. Gotta realize that that's just how being sick is. And it's just like it sucks. It's not fun. Like, I'm not advocating getting sick at all, but like, it's it just is. It's part of being a human is getting sick. Nowadays, you know, it's like you're a human. You get sick. I've been sicker than fuck and whatever. And then it's like, I don't know. Like you, you get over it. Hopefully I knew, I knew, I know a guy who's um, currently like almost 80 years old right now who got that flu that's going around. Oh, he, that flu has been bad too. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And he goes, he goes, he had to go to the hospital for one night. Cause he was like, I think he was just so dehydrated. Oh, they put an IV in him or something. Probably. Yeah. But like, he was like that. He he goes. I haven't had anything kick my ass like that in fucking uh, more yeah. than a few years. Whatever, because like I normally get sick once every like three or four years, but it's pretty bad. Because mm-hmm. like yeah, exactly. Yep. The last time I was sick before this was COVID way back in 2019. Well, you COVID know? didn't. And exist this until this last one I had like yeah, the last one I had like two weeks ago. It started as a headache. I don't really get headaches. But like it started as a headache, and after like two days, that fucking headache got so bad it was making me throw up. It was a migraine, yeah. And then and then I developed the upper respiratory cold, and then the cough, and then the you know irritable bowel syndrome. So yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like every sickness that I've had in my life has been different and fucked up. And uh, the two hottest uniform nerds on YouTube. <laughs> Thanks, Dan the Man. Yeah, I mean, we try. Let's see if I can do this. Don't. <laughs> just <laughs> sit the fuck down. Don't. 
I, just for ten, for five dollars. If, if you money. were sitting next to me, I would fucking punch you in the face. Huh? That's funny. Yeah. Dan yeah. appreciates it. He'll let us know. Wait, he'll tell us. Wait. He'll, yeah, he'll tell he'll us. Let us know. He appreciates but, it. But Jesus fucking great. Also, you're missing the roll in your fucking uh, uh, right shoulder. Huh? You're missing the roll in your right shoulder. Yeah, it's the 16 uniform. They still had a lot of them, though, because it, it was on who made it for the sling. Depends on who made it. it. Depends on who made it. I'm not saying your, your uniform is incorrect. I'm saying you're missing that because it's yeah. easier when you're actually doing it to just let that fucker hang on the roll. <laughs> That's what I like about those. And everyone always yep. asks me, like, what are those for? And I'm like, it's just a roll of wool that keeps your fucking slings on. Yeah, so, exactly. You don't. And have they're to... really fucking nice. People are like, yeah. "Those are so dumb." I'm like, "Ah, have you ever used one?" Because those uh, are are really fucking nice. Slings are a must-have if you're in the. Yeah, field. and just not having to constantly fucking readjust it because you have that little thing on your shoulder. Right. Right. Yeah. It's like, and I'm a big guy, as you know. So it's like, if I if if I'm rolling with a sling, it's it a it, it it's extended to the max, right? And B, it's like it's. It's tight, but it's loose, and it's, like, fucking always falling off my shoulder. I'm like, fuck! And that's why I think, like, in basic and shit, I like carrying the saw and the 240, yep. but, like, I mostly carry the saw, is because I could just sling it over my fucking neck. Okay. But then it's a piece of shit to get at when you need it. No, not really. I mean, well, it's slower than just taking it off your shoulder, but... I, I would disagree, because, like... Um, so I had the Alice pack, right? And ba- we're yeah. just talking about basic, right? With the saw. And there was a lot of times where like, I would, um, we get into quote unquote contact in basic. It's blanks. It's not fucking real at yeah. all. And, um, I'd be able to drop my ruck and then just pull the fucking gun off. Like I would on my shoulder, like that quickly. I'm not mm-hmm. shitting you. And I would just be able to like fucking get the bipod out, bam, and start laying down fire. So fuck you nate by the way in the chat i see you there you slimy little bitch you he missed slimy my work. Little... nate's also sick by the way so oh everyone's fucking sick yeah nate. i'm just waiting for it and uh we'll get here don't worry i'm glad i, I got just... it done early so i don't have to worry about it anymore i've got i've got a, i've got one trip that me and the better half are doing in a bit and if we can get through those few days and then we get sick yeah not a problem. Yeah, absolutely this. My heart was better than yours. That's fair, it is. Your hands are bigger than mine. I have tiny little baby hands. <laughs> yeah, you do, actually. I do. I have very small <laughs> hands, yeah. I think we've done this, like, we were, we were like, hanging out, like, we did the comparison. Yeah. Of, like, no, my hands I have, like, very size. fucking small hands. Yeah. For, yeah. So I'm like, oh, shit, man. I have very Because you're, you're, you're not, like, short. You're, like, you're... I'm five ten, and I'm like 170 pounds, but my right. fucking hands are super tiny. Yeah. And it's the best, the best hands everybody's ever seen. Let's just, I'm gonna be honest right here. That's the best hands everybody's ever seen. Let's me really I, get up in there in the nooks and crannies like a Thomas English muffin. Well, that's what we were also talking about. Like, um, the way we shoot guns is different because yeah, I've got the fucking ogre hands, and I need to place my hand differently on the trigger. Than yeah. you do, and it's like, yeah. I think we were like, we, I fuck, I wish we had recorded that because we had to come. Look, we were shooting the label, right? Yeah. Because I'm like, I love the musket trigger. I fucking love that thing. The straight right? trigger, yeah. And that's that's why they're so popular with AR shooters and everything mm-hmm. nowadays. But you and I were in the know before that shit. Yeah. And it's like, okay, musket triggers are amazing, but I'm like, I have to use my second digit. You use your first, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. So you use your first digit of your sugar finger. Yep. And then I use my second because I have to wrap around the grip, uh, the the grip and everything, just to make that work. But we still get equal results. Yeah. You know, I'm one of the people that's like, you don't wrap your thumb over, you put it alongside. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And yeah, that's yeah. been shown in videos. Uh, but like, it's it's just still like the way my hand sits. Like I have to do the second digit. Yeah. But, like, you also are such a better handgun shooter with the bigger ones. Because, like, even the 1911, it's almost, like, too big for my hand. I can shoot with it, but I have to readjust all the time. Well, and here's the thing, too, is, like, but what we've discussed on here and in person is, like, I don't like bigger grip pistols. Yeah. 
1911, I can shoot it well. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm not bragging. I'm just saying I can shoot it well. But I prefer like a smaller uh, grip on a pistol with my ogre hands. Like it's like, yeah. it's weird. So the most comfortable gun I have to shoot that I own is my Ruby. That is a very, very fucking comfortable pistol. Yeah, I love that fucking thing. That is like the perfect is, uh, game gun. Nope, can't. Nope, we're on a, can't on a stream. Them. We're on YouTube stream. Yeah, we're on a stream. Yep. Can't, yep. can't grab stuff. Nope. So, uh, but uh, yeah, it's uh, no, the Ruby, I would agree. Like, here's the thing is like that. So that pistol in, in itself, if it fits my ogre ass hands and yeah. yours. Tiny little baby hands. Equally yeah. comfortable. That's a good design. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, it's a, it's a fucking straight bullback cold 1903. Correct. But, so, the, but, but the grip is longer. It is. Yeah. Cause it's got, um, shittier magazine. Design. Correct. But like, um, as far as the, the length is concerned, let's just talk about that quickly when we talk about the magazines, but like, um, for you with smaller hands, the extra grip length doesn't, doesn't hinder matter. You. Yeah. It doesn't hinder you. Um, if, I'm shooting a pistol that has a shorter grip length than what my hand is. It does affect me. Now yeah. you can mitigate that with the Ruby because it's a long grip, mm -hmm. longer grip. The grip is as long as the barrel. It's almost exactly proportional. They're, they're, the yeah, you're right. Yeah. yeah they're, 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 and it's like when I shot my Ruby, I'm like, this thing is comfortable as fuck. It is. It's a great I fucking mean, handgun. I see why the French bought millions of these. Right, because yeah, it's a Spanish design for people that are yeah. listening. It's a Spanish design, and um, but it was really good. Like, and that's why I like my um, I personally like my Glock forty five, mm -hmm. model forty five, not the fucking twenty one, um, or the forty one, uh, because the grip is longer. Okay, so the Glock model forty five is a seventeen grip with a nineteen slide. Okay, and I really do like that, and it's yeah, it's got so the shorter slide. But the full frame. Correct. And that is my that is my nightstand gun. So that's literally because I'm so comfortable with it. Because I went out and shot it and it was like, oh, this is great for Good close shit. range, you know, defensive fire, you know? And so that that is what I like. Like, but I just my hands are fucking they're not like gigantic, but they're like bigger. Well, you're just a big dude. So like Right. And that, that that's yeah. the thing is like I and that's the thing is like, so Devin and I, we, we cross over on a lot of uh, weapons, firearms that we can shoot well together. Like, like we both shoot them well. Things where it's like our size does play a fucking factor into it. It does. You know? And it's like, I can, I can rapid fire an FAL. Not super accurately, but I can rapid fire. Devin, for him to do that, it's, it's, it's not a lot as... Harder. Yeah, it's a lot. Harder. I don't have the mass to right. combat the recoil impulse. Exactly. Also, Dan the Man, the legend, my two world wars. So the 1911. Well, let's just talk about that really quick. So there's two 1911s. They use two different ones for two world wars. Well, the A1, whatever. I mean, it's not the on. same gun. Come on. It was come enough on. for them to change the name. It's the same size of the fucking frame, though, penis. Yeah, you know what they should have called it? The M1. <laughs> it took me like two seconds to get that. I I just got it. Okay. All right. All right. Nice. But um, no. In all honesty, like to be completely honest with the the viewers and you and like every well, you you already know me on this topic. Like uh, the nineteen eleven. It's a garbage handgun. It really is. It's it's not the best. It works. Yeah. Um. It. But, it's, I mean, but look at look at they both okay. There's tons of handguns in World War II that have the same parent handgun. Okay? You have the yeah. Colt 1911, the fucking Browning High Power, the fucking yes. Polka Rev. Like, all of these handguns that have the same parent handgun, they all come from the 1903. That is the, Correct. the bridge Correct. of yes. all the shit. Yep. And the 1911 is the worst of all of them. Yeah, and I would say, like, the, the argument between the high power and the toke is. So let, let's get into that. I, we, we actually yeah. have never had this conversation. No, we haven't. So what do you think is the better 
well not better because i that's so fucking subjective and absolute but like um what is your preference for a handgun out of those two i would take the toe grip but once again that comes down to hand size it's a full frame i like the round a lot i really like the round a lot you yes get, same you're getting a shit ton of performance for as long as you can shoot handgun relatively proficiently because it does have a higher recoil impulse it does it's little, yep it's a little yep. spicier but yep. it's so narrow it's so svelte it's so well rounded like that's the, the cool thing about the toe grip it's all round edges it's meant to be super easy to draw it's meant to be easy to carry close to the body it's it's designed for that semi shrouded hammer i like having a hammer i'm sorry i'm not a striker person but um and you know all this other stuff and you're getting a great round out of that but you're still getting enough mass because it's all steel to where it's a not a pain to shoot you know right. yeah and then you have the the um high power which is the last gun john moses browning ever worked on is um at the first like modern day handgun really double stack magazine you yep. know you know all this other stuff it's the first it's literally the grandfather of like the clock and all this other stuff the browning to yeah Girl, i agree yep. magazine. like it's pretty much what every modern thing is based off of and um those are great but then you look at the 1911 which was continued to be made 40 years after both of those came out yeah it's like where are the contracts like that oh, yeah. that's what but I everybody's to... always like well 45 is <laughs> i'm like 45 of like all of the fucking modern day pistol rounds that people still use has the worst by a significant margin ballistic coefficient okay mm -hmm the worst and what you're gaining compared to like a good nine millimeter or a seven six two tokarev you know or or literally anything all the five sevens a 22 magnum yep you know like literally anything pretty much. well and that's the thing is like so um i i literally went over to my neighbor's house and we one day we did this we took a nine millimeter nine by 19 um a tokarev and my glock 21 and I think another 45 that I had. And we try to just see how our groups were. We're not yeah. professional shooters by any means. We're just amateur, like people that know how to shoot pistols very rudimentarily. Right. And the 45 had the most snap. And it's like, yeah, okay. If you're within about, you know, I guess 40, 50 meters of your target with a pistol that shoots 45, good to go if you can hit them because yeah. if you can get a follow-up shot you know and it was like okay so nine millimeter we all did really well on that like it was about a i don't know at 20 yards or i'm sorry nine yards it was uh about a six inch group like shooting i mean i'm not i'm not talking like just and we're also not jerry mitchell like we haven't been doing yeah. this our whole lives and it was like a six inch group at nine yards with nine millimeter which is not bad okay that's within a threats, you know, kill zone, right? Yeah. 45, we did not do as well. And they're like, yeah, but you hit them once. They're fucking, no, it's not. It's not true. That's not how it works. It's not, I mean, it's not most how it works. 45s are only moving like 800 to 900 FPS. Yep. That's and not great. No, it's not. But like, if you hit somebody with, it's not wearing body armor, first of all, and B, you have to be very close to them. Yeah, but Dude. if I also hit somebody with a nine mil or a toke rev or even a twenty-two long rifle, well, not wearing body armor, we're gonna get into the toke rev in a second. But like, yeah. So we did that, and then we were like, okay, um, forty-five is like okay. Like we got a couple shots on target, and then the the only thing forty-five has over any of these other like really good rounds we're talking about is energy transfer, and that's just because the round has mass. Yeah, it's a half ounce slug. Yeah. With a standard full metal jacket, 230 grains, it's a half an ounce. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's, it, again, not shitting on the 45 because I actually love the 45, right? Yeah, but, but like the 45 is one of those rounds where it does so much better out of, like, a carbine length barrel than it does out of a pistol correct. barrel. I, yeah. uh, submachine gun, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'd agree with you there. So, so we did that test. And then, then we both shot the Tokarev. It was an M57. I know somebody in the comments 
Mm-hmm. So the M57 is the best toker. The best toker ever. And I, I, I fucking agree 100%. Yep. So we shot the toker of as fast as like a defensive situation and as accurate as possible. Our groups were within three inches and that fucking thing moves at like, what is it? 2,100 feet per second. It's a, it's a movement about 1200. Yeah. 1200. Yeah. So I'm Liz Dexic. Like, so the I weakest was... runs you can get are about 1200, but can, your, can your you, average you is going to be like, like 15 to 1600. Can you Google this? Like the military surplus rounds, like what they would, they would uh, roll. 1200 i mean it seems right but like nine millimeter is like 1200 right or 1400 it can be but the thing is about nine millimeter there's so many different variances yeah oh absolutely yeah yeah i'm I'm talking i'm talking like the standard fmj like the fucking for nine mil like 115 or 124 grain um for toke it's 85 grain fucking surplus 85 grain yep Just do this and that'll be that. I think it's 2100. I was gonna say, there's some that are really moving, like just the, the standard, like surplus rounds because they're made for both pistols and some machine guns. Oh, most yeah, of them. they're made for both pistols and some machine guns, so but really mo- most of them, but not, not all of them. But like, uh, I think it's 21, but I could be very wrong. That's why I wanted you to confirm this. Um, the average is 1230 to 1580 feet per second for a 760 toke. Yep. Okay. That's and I was wrong. I, I, I was like, I always hear it's like 12 to 13 is kind of the average. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But so, it's still like a handgun moving 2100 is, I don't even think an FN57 moves. Jesus FN5. Christ. I'm thinking of 556. Five, I'm sorry. Yeah. I was going to say 20, 20, what, yep. what, 2600 is a 5. That, five that's what I want to confirm is because like I'm, I'm not right all the like, time. I was pretty sure it was like 12 to 1300. So. Yep. So even, even still like 1200 feet per second with a uh, 30 caliber projectile. That's 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 fucking cooking. Yeah, and the well, the cool thing about the toke out of a rev, pistol. Yeah, the cool thing about the toke rev over the 1911 is they're similar sized handguns, mm-hmm. but like a toke rev will make a hundred yard shot. Yeah, I mean, and it's different. We're talking from... service pistols. We're not talking like yeah. the, the Boomer Kimbers and all that shit. Yeah, right? yeah. But yeah. like so, but the thing about you, a nineteen eleven, you start losing performance at about fifty yards. Like yeah. it, it's a significant loss in performance, a noticeable point of impact loss of performance at fifty yards. But a toe grab will make a hundred yard shot because it's a spicy round, it's moving. It's a tiny little bullet. It's not as affected by the wind. It's not as affected by gravity, you know. And it's moving faster. But like the cool thing about it is that close range, it's also throwing up because it is moving so fast. Instead of relying on energy transfer and impact like the 45, it is creating a fucking huge wound cavity because it's yep. going through. It's basically, yeah, like you said, it's like the 5.56 five, of the day. Yeah. And it's like, you know, it's out of a There's pistol. so much back pressure on it that you're getting so yeah. much more of a wound cavity. And it's not, you do have to worry about over penetration. That is a problem with the toe grip. You don't really mm-hmm. have to with a 45. But Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's like, that's not professional advice, but like it's, it's from observations. Yeah. The 762 toke, that, that round in itself mm-hmm. out of a pistol. Yeah. Moving that fast and that like, mm-hmm. whatever. That was the predecessor for the five, seven. Yep. Okay. That's what Paige's what? carry gun is. She uses my Chinese type 54 as her carry. gun. Right. And it's like, that's what inspired the five, seven and all shit. And it's like, yeah, a bottlenecked cartridge for my yep. pistol. Put it in a submachine gun. More it works even better than a forty-five does in a submachine gun. You're right. getting a more complete powder burn. And you're that's right. so much more velocity. We were doing a podcast uh, the other night, and um, I said the MP5 is the best submachine gun ever fucking made. Arguably, and, and it, but it was like. Well, what about the Papa Chef 41? I said, yeah, up until the MP5, for sure. Yeah, I would say the MP5 is currently the best submachine gun in the world. It really right, is. even with the, the 7 and the 9. Like, yeah. It's like, it's, 
I think that is the best submachine gun ever fucking made so far. Yep. And um, the PPSH-41, probably the second best. Uh, I mean, it was definitely widespread, but I would say the PPD-40 is better than the PP because it's a PPSH-41 with none of the stamped cost-cutting measures. It's a heavy mill. Yeah, I know that, but like... So you PPD would argue 40, that? You would argue the PPD? Yeah, because you're going to have even less recoil. You're going to have an even higher fire rate. But it's more expensive have. to make. It is yeah. much more. But it's, it's basically like... It's a copy so we're not, of Yeah, but we're KP. not talking about that, but like... It, 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 the KP-31, obviously. Yeah, which is a great interwar milled submachine gun. Mm-hmm. You know, so, you, like, you, so your opinion is... The PPD-40. I would say the PPD-40 because it's a PPSH-41 that's heavier milled. Milled. Less recoil, you know, all yep. that other stuff. Say Heavier fire. Like, it's just better. It's just a better PPSH-41. It's all yeah, it's just at the time, like, they couldn't afford to... Well, it was all about how can we make something that works almost as good, but three times as fast. Right, exactly. And then yeah. also for the, the cost of, Can yep. we make five of them for the cost of one of these? And so, so um, somebody brought up in the comments the Uzi, and that was also a thing I, I I was saying on the podcast is like, the Uzi would be my third choice, like for best submachine gun ever fucking made. I would say the Uzi is actually a terrible submachine gun, but it's a great PDW. I, I would disagree with you on that because it's fucking heavy. It's huge. Yes, it's not. It's not a fucking great PDW. No I way. would say, well, he, well, here's the thing. It's a great PDW because there's that many of them that are actually really good. Um, but it's it's the first one. So we're also talking about the the actual Uzi, not, not the fucking... The full size, micro... not the micro Uzi, the full size Uzi. Yes. Yeah. That thing is heavy as fuck. It is heavy as fuck. It's big as fuck. Yep. It's not a but good PDW. But if you look at the fucking Reagan opinion. assassination attempt, you can hide it in a suit. Yeah, if you're my size. But how often does that happen? But I'm saying, you can't really hide a fucking MP5 in a suit. <sighs> yeah, okay. So you're I would correct. classify the Uzi as more of like... It's like the LaBelle of the PDW. So here's the thing, is like, um, with the MP5, mm-hmm. we're talking about the MP5. Yes. We're not talking about the MP5K or SK. Yep, the full size MP5, yes. Yes. And the full size Uzi? Mm-hmm. I would say the Uzi is just it, it's big and bulky because it's the first PDW. And then you get into like the fucking Mac tens and the Mac elevens, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not talking about that, but you like get um, into the little fucking like Steyr TMPs and shit now. The the H and K MP7, the Uzi's the genesis of that. Yeah, I I I, I... Again, not going to touch anything like yep. that on, on stream. But you know what I'm saying, right? It's more of... I'm just thinking right now. I'm just thinking, yeah. like, so that's what's... Because uh... <sighs> a personal defense you're, you're weapon... You're fucking... Basically you're absolutely right. automatic control... You're, you're, actually, you're actually fucking right about the uh, size. Yeah. It's a, it's, it, the Uzi is the first fully automatic controllable pistol. That's what it is. That's what a PDW basically is. Yeah, I know. Yep. And, you can and operate like... it with one hand. Okay, you only need a hand to operate it and effectively, and the weight benefits to that. But like this is before we really had everything down to a fucking exact science, and that's why we have the MP7 and the Steyr TMP and all these things that are half the size and half the weight because we got better at re- managing the recoil. The Uzi didn't have that at the time. It's the first PDW. I well, the, the, the Uzi time. like the recoil is minimal. Yeah, because it's so heavy. And it's so bulky. Yeah, exactly. But like, it's the first PDW. I don't consider the Uzi a great submachine gun because if you compare it to other submachine guns, like if you compare it to an MP5 and you compare it to like, let's say, even going back, like a, a Steyr MP34, you know, all these other things. It it doesn't do as good. The performance isn't there because it's missing. it's missing barrel length. It's missing this stuff of a submachine gun. It's in a category of its own. The Uzi created the PDW. It's an automatic Uh, pistol with controllable recoil. That's what the Uzi is. It's just the first one, so it's big and bulky. So it's kind of on that transition. Because you can see where it came from. You can see the submachine gun lineage where it came from. But it's that first step to getting to, like, the Steyr 
TMP and the H and K. No, I, I know fun. what you're saying. I'm just again, I'm thinking. So it's yeah. like that's the the gear grinding fucking sound that you hear. It's just like, it's just that transition gun that created. Yeah, and and so, but it can be it can be both. It's one of those things where I'm not disagreeing that it's it can be a submachine. You definitely can. The Uzi can be a great submachine gun, but I would say it is an even better PDW because you compare it to the stuff of the time. Well, and I, I know some guys that were in special forces and like all that yeah. shit like in the eighties. And they said the Uzi is their fucking favorite because it was so fucking reliable. I said, what do you think about the MP5? They're like, it's fucking, the, it's the best. And I'm like, okay, well you can't have two bests. Well, the thing like, is no, in different applications, they're different submachine. Guns exactly. Yep. Yep, yep. 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 I would yep. say the H and K is the best submachine gun you could buy right now. The MP5 is the best submachine gun you can get right now. It really is. It still is. Yep. It's still the yep. test of time. But the Uzi is, I would say, it's not the best submachine gun, but it's also no longer the best PDW. That's why you don't see them anymore. Oh no, because yeah, a lot of that shit is yeah. Okay, I know what you're saying. Um, but if you look at it in the 80s, I just want, I just or, want to answer or, a couple. Of or how do I get an automatic nine millimeter that I can? If I'm trying, conceal. There's yeah. one. It's the Uzi. Right. Really quick, I'm gonna answer some um, um, YouTube member Go channel members um, shit. Um, what's up, Mike and Devin? This is what's up. Uh, and no, it's not a weed vape. I don't smoke weed. Um, I I don't have a problem with people smoking weed, but like I just get anxiety. It's a pregnancy really test. He's been doing a lot of. Weird <laughs> so. Yeah. No, it's just a Nick vape. I, I, yeah. I'm, I've, been, I've been like hopelessly addicted to nicotine since I was like yes. 12. Mike's mouth has a chance of being pregnant, so he has that pregnancy test. Right. And so, no, I don't I don't smoke weed. Again, don't have a problem with it, but like I uh, I just can't I do can't, it even though the state made it legal because government. East German uniform. Come on now. I love the East German uniform. <laughs> That's on you. I know, right? It's a Kampfgruppen uniform. I mean... It... <laughs> I do actually really like this uniform. It's a very, It's a very easy, nice, utilitarian uniform. I'm a big fan of it. Everything's right where I think it should be. Everything lines up good. It looks relatively nice. And you don't have a fucking Mandarin collar. Huh? Not anymore. And you don't have a Mandarin it's collar. The rise and fall collar. So it's still a, yeah. it's still a tall collar, but it's not. The it's U.S. was tall. still retarded. And then they were yeah. like, well, the Mandarin collar looks the best. It's like, well, that's what know. the Canadians went into World War One with as well, you know. So, so did the Austrians and everything. But then they went... The, the Austrians actually based this off the British uniform, the 1902, the collar. Got Shit, my internet just cut out, yep. So, the rise and fall collars a lot more comfortable. But oh, I have a yeah. long neck, so I don't have a problem with the Mandarin collars anyways, but this is just a lot more comfortable. But the long neck is definitely an understatement. Yep. You're not like, you're not like Andrew Tate, like it's not like unproportional, but I have a longer neck. Yeah. Yep. And like I have a average size neck with a double chin, and like do the Mandarin collar just the Mandarin collar sucks. sucks. And I just hate having to do two of those little fucking hook and clasps. The clasps, yeah. So they, they're long. not good. This one has one, and I went into the bathroom to like do it before the stream. And I was like, "Fuck!" The one time I get it right away, I'm like, I didn't even need to walk in here to like fucking see to try to line it up. Right. Um. Let's see. I'm going to get a picture up and we'll. Kitties were making noises. So. Yep. Meow. Come here. The fuck? Which one do I want to do? Come here. I gotta figure out what picture I want to show. You know what would be really shitty though? If like somewhere in the mid two thousands, 
the United States decided to bring back the Mandarin collar on a shitty gray uniform. Yeah, right. I mean, that'd be horrible, right? It would be. That'd be awful. The one that nobody ever fucking uses. The one that we don't talk about anymore because it's garbage. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you a picture really quick. Load me up on that picture. Look at that. Oh my god, there's a lot to unpack here. Yeah, exactly. Holy so, shit. Yep. You're Belgian. Yep. Because you could tell by their fucking weirdo top hats. <laughs> and their 1889 Mausers. Mm -hmm. but they're wearing French shit. What French shit? The, um, the gray coat. No, it's not French at all. No, that's French. Cause it would have been black. It's Belgian. If they were Belgian. Nope. If they were the people that have the top hats, it would be black. They'd have a black coat. If they were, that's a French gray coat. Those are French gray coats. Those are 87. The colorizer got it wrong. I Those think. are 87 gray coats. Those are French 87 gray coats. Those aren't the Belgian ones. They would be black. Shit. Yeah. Well, the colorizer got it wrong then. Yeah. <coughs> so keep unpacking. It's a lot. Got a whole bunch of tornisters. Wish the Belgians had. Yep. Damn. You see the guy in the back? Yeah. Way back. Yeah. Like laughing, smiling. Yeah. These guys are trying to look hardcore for a photo. He's just hanging out. Yep. I'm trying to figure out, like, because I haven't ever seen Belgians wearing that hat before. The top hat? No, no, no. I've seen the Belgians wearing the top hat, but the two guys wearing the green and yellow one. The fez. I've seen a fez before, but I haven't seen that specific. No, the Belgian fez. Oh. I've never seen it either, to be honest with you. Yeah. It's like, what the fuck is going on there? Because it literally is a fez. Yeah. Well, it looks more like what the French had at the beginning of World War One, the like Civil War style kepi, but there's no bill on. Right. Exactly. It's like yeah. it's a forage cap with a little tassel on it, and that's it. Hmm. So what the fuck? <laughs> you know. No idea. Yeah. I was looking at this today, and I was like, uh, I don't know at yeah. all. But they got French coats, so that's kind of cool. Uh, yep. All right. I'm going to show you another cool. one. I like that. I like that a lot. It's not every day you get to see the Belgians during World War One. Because, I mean, it only oh, took shit. a year before they started up, before they started getting French and British shit. Look at that. <laughs> Again, they're Belgian, so. Yep. But the hats. Yeah. These are it's the like wearing hardy hat. hats into combat in the Civil War, but like, this yeah. is fucking 70 years later. This is the gendarmes, the military police. So what about, um, what about uh, fucking senior fucking lunchbox in the back? Uh, he's just hanging out. Look at him. Well, he's got the white thing on his hat, so he's the, like, NCO. Yeah. He's also fatter than I am. Yeah, that was the thing of the day. You could afford to eat. That was, like, the European <laughs> thing. Yeah, well... But like... That's why he was that way. That was, that was desirable. 
He's also got a fucking saber. And something in his right hand. I can't identify what that is, but like... So this guy is leading these guys on how to fucking fight in the trenches or fight in a fucking town. Like, Well, they did because they were still soldiers, but they're the federal police, basically. Yeah, but like, what the fuck, man? Yeah, but I like that that they got the the boots right. The early, before you see the putties. Yep. The boots yep. that are the pointed toe, the tall heel, but the le- the fitted leather gaiters. Yeah, it's just fucking great. Like, these guys are up there. It's, obviously, it's a training shot, obviously. Yeah. But, like, um, yeah, it's just they're wearing the top hats. And I'm sure these guys had to eventually fight on the front. And it's like, uh, hopefully, Chubbs McGee back there didn't lead you into combat because he wouldn't last that long doing some cardio. I like the little like bistro set that was sitting by the wagon that you know that fat fuck was sitting in before that. Oh yeah, that absolutely, yeah. absolutely. All right, check this out. That's a big fucking dog. Yep, it's a mastiff, and or it's a it's a type of mastiff rather. Yeah, and uh, the Belgians would use these dogs to like cart machine gun carts up to the front yeah and whatever and you notice he's got a fucking uh his foot is wrapped or his leg is wrapped rather yeah on the front right and then yeah these belgian guys are like they're fucking tired you can tell yeah. they might be you know most boomers would be like oh it's a thousand yard stare it's like these guys have probably never been to combat they're just fucking tired you know well they got french the mess kits on the big ones, but both of them do. Yeah. And the guy in the back is wearing his fucking, uh, his top hat or his cap, whatever the fuck they want, a Shaco yeah. on his belt. Yeah. You know, it's like, he just doesn't want to fucking deal with this anymore. He's like carrying this big fucking dog. That's probably not being obedient. That's probably what's going on here. That's why he's got it by the collar and the other guy has his on the leash. Yep, exactly. He's probably like, God damn it. Just fucking. Let us wow. get to where we need to go and then fucking just let me sleep. But yeah, it's fucking cool. Um, you can tell that guy on the left side of the screen doesn't really like dogs because he's keeping a fucking hard eye on that fucking dog. The guy in the brown shirt. No, oh, he's probably like scared. Like, oh, it's a yeah, big like, dog. That. Yeah, yeah <laughs> it's a big dog. All right, check this out. Look at that impressive camouflage. You can't even tell. <laughs> That's just a field. I don't know what you're talking about. Yep. That's cool, though. Yeah. And so they're. You see they're... how in this one, their trench coats are more black? The, the I, so I, I know paint, Belgians but... wore black. I, I do know that now. Like you yeah. brought that up. And I was like, oh, shit. Yeah. So the guy that colorized. And like you can yeah. see the ones that have the newer coats, they're black. Yep. So, yeah, they had like field gray, like um, trousers. Yep. And... Well, trousers could change depending on what you were doing. Sure. But, like, yeah, I, I remember now, like, in my research, like Belgians, because Belgians are so underrepresented. They are very um, underrepresented. In but the you first know what? If fucking 1889 Mausers didn't cost so much, I might think about it. I've looked for one for years and I could never get one for what I could afford at the time. They're in 765, which is the same as the Argentines. So like it was the it, Ottomans and the Argentines, the only three, the only three. Yep. But uh, it was great. I remember seeing one that was um it was an Ottoman capture 1890. Which is the same thing as the 89, but without the barrel jacket. It was an Ottoman capture by the British, and they gave it to the Belgians because they didn't even have to change anything. Right, right, exactly. Yeah. Yep. So, because it took the same clips and it took the same round already. Yep. And, uh, yeah, it's like, this picture is fun because it's like, it's kind of a satirical picture, but it's also, yeah. that's how you do it, man. And that would come forth later on in the war, like attaching camouflage to a helmet. These are hats, of course, but like um, our hats, yep. The, it's the like top um, hats. yep, and 
Yeah, I attach the camouflage and oh, it's kind of funny, but it's like that's actually practical. It is actually when practical. To, when you get to a point, yeah. So you think about this one. Ooh. The fuck's going on here? Obviously German guys. Yeah. And then the the, the Bulgarians? Is that who's wearing the brown, the Bulgarians? No, look at the hats again. I I don't know. The tassel, we just talked about this. The tassel. Yeah. There's two countries in Europe at this point that I know of that would have worn those tassels. What? Spain and Belgium. And Serbia and Bosnia and parts of Austria and parts of the Russians and the <sighs> Ottoman Empire and Greece and so no, there's actually like 15. I should have said Western fucking Europe. Yeah. So they're Spanish. No, they're 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 Belgian prisoners. Belgian prisoners. Yeah. Oh yeah, this is the British uniform part. Yeah. Yes. Well, well, it's a transition period, but like, yeah. Yes, they. This is like probably fifteen or sixteen. Yeah. And um, yeah, these are Belgian prisoners. Their, their age shit already. Yeah. Yep. Because I was so, like, well, the guys are still wearing their fucking pickle hobs and stuff like that. I was like, could be fucking Bulgarians because they had people that had tassels and fezes and stuff. Yeah, no, they did, but like, um, I should have said Western Europe, but uh, yeah. So yeah, these are um Belgian <laughs> POWs, and they were just like, hey, what's up, man? And they're wearing the fucking okay. So those um, the things on their shoulders, the fucking uh, I can't remember. I can yeah, never that's... remember the name of those. Um, goddamn, these guys are like a super reserve unit. Yeah. Like. You just tell the like, old men reserve unit. The like yeah, reserves, yeah. And they're just like yeah, I go take like the land the landsturm or whatever. The yeah. landwehr, but like uh, I just wonder what regiment this was, and they're wearing the fucking um, yeah. The these guys have been like band members, you know. Yeah. And like oh, we're posing for a photo with a rifle and some weapons and ammo pouches for once. It's fine. So yeah, the landwehr, but uh, yeah. That's cool, though. You don't see the Belgians a lot. There they are in their fancy dress uniforms. Talking to the nurses. God, fucking how tough were women back then? Look at those shoes they're wearing. They're standing all day being fucking oh, yeah. combat nurses and that shit. And now you see them fucking wearing Crocs at the hospital. And they're bitching about how bad their feet hurt. Right. It's like, fuck. So what do you see about the guy on the left that's not wearing his fucking uh, overcoat? He's fat. And he has... Very. Very. Very fat. And it's like fatter than I am again. Yeah. And he's got a full fucking beard and a shaved head. Yep. And he's enlisted because he doesn't have the thing. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So it's Doesn't like have his gray coat, but he has his double breasted <laughs> shirt with his stripes on it. It is gut. He's he's resting his gut on the fucking railing. Yeah, he I mean he got to sometimes. I get it. And this guy that's making eye contact with the camera with the mustache way on the left side is fucking hilarious. Yeah. Yeah, he's an NCO, you can tell, but like it's like he's just like he's just like, I'm having a great time, man. You know, like I'm just I happy love to these be here. Guys. Yeah, I love these kind of pictures because it's like there's so many different guys in this picture, right? A yeah. lot of them are being very like cordial and shit. You got the guy on the far left, like you just pointed out, that's just, like it he's always just surprises me because like this is clearly in the summer based on like how green the forest oh, is. Yeah. Like oh that. yeah. But it's like yep. why are these guys wearing those fucking gray coats? Well, the French did the same thing. Yeah, but like it's hot as fuck. Right, but like they, they wouldn't wear the tunics underneath. They would just wear a fucking service shirt. Okay, and that, then, yeah. And then they're, yeah. they're but it, it would still be 
Oh yeah, it's it's, it's heavy. Well, but like also, well, like I suppose the European climate and what they're used to and everything. But like I just correct. cannot imagine. No, but like here's the thing: is like people were used to wearing wool clothes in the their everyday life. Yeah. But like you that's know, still heavy. That's your winter coat. Well, it's too. basically like, it's basically like you and I have been in the military, like wearing t-shirts and shorts and whatever, or jeans, yeah. going in and wearing fucking, you know, the uniform that's a little bit heavier than what we're used to. That's a, apparently like I guess what that was to them. So that's so. that's the only thing I, I can equate it as is like it was a little bit heavier, but you get used to it and everything, and bam. Yeah, isn't that a funny fucking picture? That is and that guy, picture. the guy on the left in his service shirt, is just fucking huge. I mean, ginormous, and his beard is like he's like a fucking Viking. Like he's got. To, oh yeah. yeah, he's big. He must be like an engineer or a forger or something. Or, or a the cook. blacksmith, the blacksmith a, a lot of times. Yeah, blacksmith have, or a would cook. have the beard to protect yep. from like uh, from sparks and stuff. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, but like um, still. The guys, guys, there were no fat guys back in the day. Right. Okay. I'm just showing you two fucking pictures from a foreign country that disprove that. So there's fat people in Europe, though. There's no fat people in America. Right. Yeah. So what do you make of this? Ooh. Well, they're Canadians. No, they're not. No, they are. They have the French gray rectangle. Those are Canadians. That's third division. Those are Canadian third division. You're 100 percent certain of that. Yeah, because you see all those light blue rectangles are wearing. Yeah, I know that because that was my division, mm-hmm. Canadian third division. So what's going on here? Well, there's an artillery gun, obviously. Do you, is there anything weird about the artillery gun? It's not uh, Allied artillery. It's not? I don't think so. Okay, so what year do you think this is? Well, it's probably late 16? Nope. When is it? This is the summer of 18. It's the Battle of Amiens, the second Battle of the Somme. Oh, Amiens, yeah. Yeah, Amiens, whatever the fuck. Makes sense. So what yeah, gun is that? in British uniforms and equipment at that point. British helmets. Yeah. But yeah, they're Canadians. They really are. Nice. So what gun is that? No idea. I'm not an artillery. <laughs> yeah. I had no idea either until I looked in the fucking description in the comments. It's, it's like a, fucking... a trench artillery gun, though. It's like they raised it up. To... So this is a fucking... Apparently, it's not confirmed. It's a French metal 1878 fucking... Tw- a 120 millimeter fucking cannon. I mean, it could be, yeah. 1870. French had a lot though. of weird shit, though. Yeah, but like, the Germans were using this because this is a German captured line. Yeah. Right? Um. So these guys are Canadians for sure. Yeah, hundred percent. Third division. Yep. Okay. So the Canadians captured this gun in 1918, and it's from 1878. You know. Yeah. It's like. Was it like a gun that the Germans captured during like the fucking Franco-Prussian War? Me pro- probably actually, and they just used it, but like yeah, that was pretty cool. But no, it's cool. Those get, these guys are Canadians. I like that. So yeah, they're they're third division. So all right, you can tell because the Canadians all had rectangles. All of their divisions okay. were rectangles, and then what company you were was the little shape above it. The shape and the color would change above the rectangle. Yep. Okay. So they wore rectangles. Okay. Mm-hmm. Good to know. Interesting. <laughs> yep. Because that's all of that fucking leather equipment. Because that's not canvas equipment. That's not 1908 gear. Oh, I know. I know. I know. Yeah. Damn. That's a cool picture. Do you have any analysis? What do you think it is? Well, it's a British guy wearing a pickle hob for some reason while he's shaving. Is he British? I mean, he's part of the empire. 
<laughs> okay, fucking. It could vague. be anybody. I mean, that's like comparing generic white dudes. Like, what are you if they're not Indian? No, no, like, no, no. But like, um, white dude. Yeah. So, but you can see that the guy, <laughs> the guy on the right, has a patch on his shoulder. Okay. No, yeah. Blue and black. So that would indicate what year, approximately? Well, this is probably late war. Nope. It has to be at least 16. It is, yep. Yeah. So it's Which mid. Mid, I guess. Mid to late, yeah. I'm mi 16 is mid. Because of all the fucking pattern 14 gear laying around. Okay. So what nationality are these guys? I, I don't know. I'm Canadian. <laughs> uh, they're Australian. Uh, makes sense. They're fucked. Yeah, they are. But like... So this is a good, yeah, they, they definitely are. They're, They're not fine, Anzac yeah. yet because the Anz, the New Zealand guys didn't get there till like late 16, early yeah. 17. And so, yeah, these are the, uh, I think it was the first Australian division. I could be misquoting that. So don't, don't I mean, it makes sense because I'm not, I'm not familiar with the Australian like regimental markings and stuff. Right. Like that. Yeah. Me either. And it, so, yeah, this guy's just like, yeah, my, I'm wearing shorts, you know, I just, I just had to get a good shave here, you know, and, I don't know. Yeah, he's got his Bermudas on. His yeah. drill cloth, yeah. <laughs> he's got his fucking pickle hob on. It's fucking amazing. Okay, this. Look at that. It's a good fucking kitty right there. That guy's important, though. You could tell by his fancy coat and his fancy hat and his fancy pants. Look and at how bike. wide that guy's pants are. Oh, it breaches. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yep. That's how you know you're important if you got the wide pants. That's well, a good little kitten right there sitting there on that fucking... It's a good fucking kitty right there. 12-inch fucking railgun shell. It's fine. That's that a fucking big kitty. fucking shell. That is a big shell. That's a massive shell. Oh, my God. But for really, though, it's the, the kitty. Look at that. Yeah, a little kitten. Like... It's got the kitty in it. Oh, it's calico. I mean, that's not that small of a kitten. That's a pretty fucking big kitten, actually. It's yeah, not that, a full-size that... cat. You can tell it's a kitten, but like that's going to yep. be a big fucking cat. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, it's like... Yeah, I love this picture. It's fun. Okay, so you tell me... You tell me where this was taken. Ooh. This could be a lot of places, though. Yeah, it could. It could be anywhere in the Middle East or. Or. It could be a lot of places. Damn. Holsey pattern fucking pith helmets. They got yep. the D mist 10 still. I is it like fucking Israel or is it Iraq? Is it nope? Is it um Turkey? Nope. Not the Ottoman Empire? Nope. Gibraltar? Nope. Egypt. Nope. No idea. The Southern Balkans. Ah, I could see that. I could, I could see that. But isn't that fucking insane that everybody just kind of blanks that front out, like Celestia? You know, everybody blanks it shit. Because I've seen pith helmets before there too. Because the Austrians and shit also wore pith helmets. Oh yeah, because it's hot. Yeah. It's like it almost is. It is hot. Yeah, almost a grease. You know, and yeah. in the, in this picture, these guys are fighting the Bulgarians. Yeah, and they're in the mountains. Uh, I forgot the fucking range, but like um. Yeah, they're in the mountains and they just got their picture taken. Hell yeah. So isn't that fucking cool though? Yeah, they got their fancy B5 boots on. They're doing doing good. So one of the comments was, these guys aren't getting enough to eat. I'm like, soldiers never get enough to eat. You never get enough to eat because you're, burning, you're burning fucking 5,000 calories a day. But here's the thing is, 
the one fucking time you actually get to like sit down and have a fucking meal, you physically can't eat that many calories before and you get home. sick. Yeah, you get yeah. sick. You're like, oh god, I feel like. So shit. no, they never. The infantry never gets enough to eat, and it's no. It, you, you physically cannot give them enough to eat because they can't physically eat that much for what. Yeah, and burning. if like these guys are just sitting up there for now, but like yeah. when they start going on the move, yeah, they're burning five thousand right now, just sitting doing nothing. It's like when they're burning 10,000, you can't give them 10,000 calories a piece. You can't stomach that. There's no way to nope. stomach that. It's, it's so, like, That's the thing people always say. They're like, they're never getting enough food. You can't. The human body doesn't work that way. Right. They are, they are always going to be burning more than they can stomach, which is why Correct. you have to rotate. They have to go back and recuperate and build right, that right. back up so they can come back. There's you physically cannot stomach fucking five thousand, six thousand calories of food. No, you can't unless you're a professional eater that has been doing it for years. You're used to it and you've been sick and all that shit. Yeah, unless you're really good at fucking sucking down hot dogs. I mean, like, oh, look at all those pickle ups. You got fucking Mark 16 Brodies. You got the butcher blades in there. You got a fucking French guy wearing an Adrian one. That is a cool picture. That is a fucking phenomenal picture. That is it. Yeah, that is awesome. Guys with their big pipes. That's cool. The guy in the back with the, the stocking hat on holding the Luger. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> That's pretty fucking cool. Yeah, this was um from what I understand, like during the Battle of Psalm in nineteen sixteen. Makes sense. And uh, you know, the French guys, of course. The Brits the BEF and the fucking French were very working together. Well, yeah, it was a united front. Because we're done still going on at that point, you know. Exactly. And so it's like, you know, it's it's really cool to see these guys that like they actually got to their objective. They fought it out. It was a rough fucking go. And then, or these guys just stumbled into the trench and grabbed all the shit and then just came back and took a picture. Yeah. And there's also something in this picture you don't see every day in world war one. There's actually not that many pictures of it. Then on the bottom center of the screen, you can see the action cover for the Lee Enfield. Bottom center. Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. I didn't even notice that. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. That was something that came out during World War One. It would be a thing through the life of the Lee Enfield, actually. But that was a thing yeah. during combat. They developed this, this fitted canvas with yep. press studs or snaps, you know, that would... Well, the crowds did it, too. ...over your action to keep shit out yeah. of the action. And it's you hardly ever see them because soldiers really didn't like them or use them. So yeah, the crowds did the same thing with the uh the G98 and then the, the K98 in World War II. It wasn't popular in World War II, but like, yeah, they came out with an action cover as well. So you don't you don't see many, and this is one picture where you actually see it, especially this late in the war. People actually well, this is it. also mid-war, sixteen. Yeah, come on. Yeah, I mean, still. Oh, so it's early Psalm. Okay. Yeah, no, um, it's six it's sixteen Psalm. When I say Psalm, I mean sixteen. Yeah. Okay. The summer of sixteen. So. Because, yeah, that, that's interesting to see. You don't see a lot of the action covers. Right. And, yeah, it's just a fucking cool picture because, like, these guys, hey, we got our first victory, and we literally watched tens of thousands of guys get mowed down. Yay, we lived. But look at the hats we got out of it. Yep. <laughs> it's because most of them what don't. What so cool. were they going up against? I'm not expert on what. I, I well, I, I couldn't tell you what unit this is for the BEF and like. Yeah, but like because right uh, like the pickle hops had the different thing on the front based on where they were. From. That that just looks like um, typical Prussian. The, the generic Prussian one. Okay. Yeah. Um. I I can't really. Because I'm not an expert on like the pickle hop things. That's. I know I know what the the uh, that's generic the Prussian one yeah. look, looks like because that's where yeah. like my family's from is the Württemberg. Wittenberg, yep. Yeah. But um, yeah, it looks like generic Prussian. Um, okay. Yeah, für König und Vaterland. Very shiny. I started too. reading into that recently because I haven't been sleeping super good and I like World War I a lot about how fucked up 
Wurttemberg was during World War One, how like they did their own fucking arms and uniform procurement. Well, like a lot of the nation states tried that. A lot, a lot of the states tried. Like Bavaria was also very stubborn. Yeah, the, yeah, and um, but like it was just weird because Wurttemberg stuck it out for so long, their own uniform and arms procurement until like 1917. Yeah, yeah, Baden Württemberg was um they were yeah, it, it that's its own thing. But like uh cuz like going into World War 1 when the Württemberg regiments deployed, they didn't have German rifles, they had Württemberg rifles. And they were all marked accordingly. Right. They had their own serial blocks and their own markings and their own fucking acceptance marks. Let me um Let me find some shit here. Yeah. No, nah, there wasn't action covers for the Springfields. There probably was for the 1917, though. You know, the better Springfields. <laughs> Just saying. I gotta fucking find some 303 British. I have so many fucking 303 British rifles and I've got no rounds. Well, I might have a few rounds. Well, I just gotta look around. I haven't done any shopping in a while for, for ammo. Uh, you're not gonna find it unless it's commercial. Guaranteed. That, I, that's fine. I'm fine with commercial. I just wanna find some 303 British so I can shoot the like 20 fucking 303 British guns I have. Otherwise, I'm going to have to, like, stick it out with the Mosin, of which I have a shit ton of ammo for, because I have, like, eight spam cans. Yeah, I'm out of pictures to show, but, like, yeah. Um, yeah, there were action covers for Springfields and shit in, like, the 1917, but, like... Unless you were cool, like, the Japanese who had the, the fancy stuff. Because, like, when they got the Siamese contract, the Siamese wanted the sliding action cover. Not the one that's, like, connected to the bolt, like, on the later Type 38s and the Type 99s. No, I've got a Siamese Mauser. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. The sliding action covers, yep. unless you're cool, like them, the Japanese who had those. I'm wearing a World War One American Expeditionary Force, or U.S., whatever you want to call it, um, 1917 service coat and uh i guess there's really no like for the, the overseas for the, cap yeah there's really like no designation it's like the type one i guess they stole from yeah. the french and they made it smaller and then uh he's wearing a 1916 austro-hungarian pattern uniform fantastic yeah it's good now in the field gray instead of the blue. It's pike gray. Come on. Yeah, I mean it's blue. Oh, absolutely. Yep. Yeah, it's blue. But I mean that was very common for back in the day. Yeah, and it's not terrible. Like no, um, it's not. It actually works, especially when it sun fades a little bit in the pictures. It works. It turns gray. Well. It was actually it pretty, gray. pretty yeah. good. Yeah. Yep. That's why. Like, well, let's just make it gray then. Pretty much. Well, they actually just, they didn't have a way to get the dye. Yep. So they went to Germany, who Germany was the world's lar single largest like chemical and dye and everything Correct. producer at, for like literally 40 years. Literally, well, That's like why in World War I, like everybody thinks the U.S. Marines wore their forest green uniforms. No. You know why? Because they were getting their dye from Germany. Yeah. And then when we entered the war, Germany was like, yeah, fuck you. We're not, we're not giving you we're dye anymore. And so they, they made a bunch of shit that was like all of green. And they were like, yeah, eh, well, we'll just wear army uniforms, which were yep. this color. So they ended up with the olive drabs, but um, they ended up, the Austrians ended up getting dye for field gray from Germany. So that's why the Austrian uniform is the color it is, is because they just got the same dye the Germans got for their uniforms. So. Very cute. Yeah, that's how um, it works.
Funny you should say that because this is actually the uniform Austria went into their annexation with was the 1916 World War One uniform. You can see pictures of that of them, the Austrians like lining the the Austrian army soldiers lining the parade grounds where the the now Germans are marching in, you know, in the 30s with their fancy M35 helmets and their tunics and everything, and they're wearing this uniform with the World War One helmet still. So, which is pretty, pretty fucking cool to see, actually. The 1916 uniform serving right into the late 30s. Uh, pictures of what? Like, are you saying, can you show pictures? Why can't Dan show pictures? Dan can show all the pictures he wants, right? Oh, in chat? No, I think they stopped that because people are just like post, you know, people, ch children are being fucking idiots and posting like fucking porn and like fucked up shit, and whatever. So, it's not um, my channel. It's fine. No, I'm saying YouTube wide. Ah, uh, made sense. Yeah. So, uh, if you want to show pictures, like just message me on, uh, Facebook, uh, Mike B, I have a page and just send it there. You'll, you'll know it's me. Trust me. And, um, just send it and then I'll fucking throw it up on, uh, on here. You, you drinking anything tonight, Mike? Yeah. Gatorade. Oh, lame. Yep. Alcohol's bad. Alcohol's delicious. Thank you. And this is freaking Forge Gin from the UK. Good stuff. I'm yeah, if you want, if Dan the man, uh, the legend, like, uh, if you want to do what I just said, like, let me know if you sent a message or whatever. Like, um, it doesn't refresh on its own, but uh, I can get on the page and. Fuck. Well, here I'll just I'll just post a fucking link. There you go. Why don't I drink? I don't have any schnapps, and it's actually not super common around here. Like, I could buy it, but there isn't a lot of schnapps flavors that I would like. If that makes any sense? You know what I mean? Rumplemints is like the closest you can get, and Goldschlager. Yeah. But like, like, that's I have Goldschlager, but that's just like a fancy man's fireball. Yeah, for sure. 100%. Yeah, uh, it's just cinnamon, but um, definitely but had a lot of experience with Goldschlager, and uh, Goldschlager is great. It's actually so much better than Fireball too. Like, well, Fireball is for trashy chicks that. Never, I'm not going to say that. Yeah, it's for mind. wasted college girls. I was I was just about to yeah. go down a fucking thing that would get this stream it destroyed. And, I mean, it really is. Fireball is disgusting compared to Goldschlager, and they're both oh, it's terrible. Cinnamon liquor. Mm -hmm. You know. I would rather drink Goldschlager though. Is Goldschlager made in Italy with some care? Yeah. So, yeah. Goldschlager it's Swiss. It's it's made in Italy. Look at the fucking bottle. I know. If you have a bottle, go look at it right now. It'll say made in Italy. Probably. I don't doubt you, but it's a Swiss company. Oh. Yeah, but like they, they it, yeah. I bet they make it in Italy. I don't doubt that at all. 100% but, they do. So. But no, it's still technically summer, so I drink a lot of white alcohol in the summer and I drink a lot of brown alcohol in the winter. Um, so I'm drinking gin and out. grapefruit soda. Ugh. Ugh. I really Ugh. like bitter. I've told you about it before. Like the reason yeah. I drink, I don't, I don't drink to really get drunk, but like, um, I have gin and grape. This is our new kitty, by the way. Look at that. That's one fucking nice kitty. This is Victor. He's the best kitty. Do a meow. Listen, now you've got a lot of the, you got you got the same amount of cats that we do. Four, we've got four now. Yeah, I've got four. Yeah, you know that. Yeah. So, um, but um, yeah, he's a I do like Fresca, but um, he he's a good he's a good kitty. He's he's our only kitty with the black toe beans. He's a black beans kitty. He's a good boy. 
Um, he oh, he's, he's annoying all the time. He eats more than the other three cats combined. He's gonna be the smallest probably. Oh yeah. He's he's a he's a good guy. He doesn't pee on the carpet. He doesn't fight with the other cats. He's a fucking vulture, though. He steals oh, yeah. food right off our fucking plates and shit. He does, he does this thing? No, he'll go in with his fucking mouth and just unhinge his jaw and grab oh. as big a bite as he can and sprint off. He doesn't even, like, fucking do the whole, like, claw, like, grab it with his claw and then run off? Nope. He just, like, he'll, it doesn't matter how fucking hot it is or spicy it is or whatever it is. He's like, people food, face. Dude, I told you about the weasel horse, what he did a couple years ago. Oh, I had yeah, some yeah. Uh, jalapenos. I was sun drying them out on the, the deck, the shitty deck out here. So I had them sitting up there. I come out there and he's chewing on something. And I'm, I noticed one of them is gone. He's chewing on a raw fucking jalapeno. And he's going like eye contact with me. Yeah. I'm like, that's going to fucking hurt you, dude. And then he's just like unfazed and i'm like what the fuck this thing could eat hot peppers okay so i gave him another one i'm just like i just want to see it for myself yeah. from start to finish he fucking grabbed it and ate it 100 percent. and i'm like that's a fucking jalapeno for dogs and cats like that's nothing to fuck around with right yeah. and he's just sitting there eating it and i'm like this dog's fucking psychotic he'll eat anything i mean he is it's a horse no, he's a weasel horse. He's a weasel horse, yeah. He's the Weasley Weasel. That's right. Good old fucking big Cody Saurus. <laughs> yep. But that, they, that picture, he's a picture is the new one. He's just a barn cat just that we went and picked up for free. It was one of Paige's friends had a barn cat. And I was like, well, let's get another cat. Because it seems like um, more cat problems go away the more cats we have. Correct. You are correct. And, and once so in a like, while they'll, they'll get into a hierarchy thing just yeah. watch for this they'll get into a hierarchy fight oh where, no there's a hundred percent hierarchy and it's also like once in a while one of the younger ones or like the, the the lesser ones will challenge one of the more hierarchical ones and you'll see this you'll see the whole like curling up next to her and then well and you see the slap coming and then it's just a fucking fight, and there's fur flying and everything. It's like, God damn it, stop. Well, the one cat we have that is, like, he's really stupid, so he's not the alpha, but he's the one that will fight the other cats. He's, like, part kangaroo, and he's gigantic, and he's dense on top of being gigantic. Is he a clap sun dense, or? Yeah, he's, like, Ooh. imagine, like, Remington dense, but twice the size. Oof, that's not good. Yeah. He's stupid as fuck, but God, is he big and heavy. And, yeah. And he beats up on Lady all the time, but they all beat up on Lady all the time because she's she's kind of a bitch. But, um, yeah. The, fucking the cat hierarchy and, like, yeah, cats are very social things. And, like, the more you have, the better it is because, like, everybody just kind of... They even they each other out. Thing. Yeah, they do their yeah. own thing and, like, it, it's like a lot less stress than if you have like one or two. Yeah, but Victor's great. He doesn't fight with the other cats. He doesn't pee on the carpet. Not yet. He not, not, I'm, not, I'm not saying pee on the carpet, but like yeah. fight with the other cats. It's going to happen. It's yeah. going to be brutal. Well, and he's going to be, be the smallest of all of them. So. Right. And it's like, it's like, it's like chesticles. Remember him? Yeah. Chester? Yeah. yeah. He's tiny. He's a lynx. Yeah. He's like got a big body or like a normal sized body, but like a tiny fucking head. Yeah. And he's like a lynx, and once in a while he'll go after the other cats and like try to do this thing, and he gets his ass, he gets his shit shoved in. I mean, like just abhorrently shoved in. Yeah. By his other cats, and it's like Remington's. He's a collapsed son. Yeah. He's that dense. fucking that fucking cat can fight. Yeah. That fucking cat can fight. Yeah. And like he, he really like the fur is flying, the back claws are going on. And whatever. Um, it's funny because um, oh oh god, I didn't tell you this. So a couple weeks ago, it's funny. Like we let them out, like we do every day when it's nice out, because like in the winter they're all stuck in here. They like to go outside and do their patrols. So Ronald, you remember Ronald? Yep. And um, he goes out there and does a patrol, but he's really never killed anything that I've seen, right? So like a couple weeks ago, fucking Wally comes back and he's sitting in front. 
the, all the cats are sitting on the front stoop that we have, right? That 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 staircase. And I'm like, what's going on? And Wally's down there on the concrete, and he's tearing some shit up. And I'm like, what the fuck? He killed a fucking morning dove. What's wrong with that? I'm like, they're the nicest birds. Like, kill a fucking blue jay or a grackle or some shit. That, yeah, like, some piece like... of shit bird. Yeah. No, so he he got a morning dove and he was tearing that fucking thing up, and all the other cats are watching. They're just waiting like, for the leftovers. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And I'm like, well, this is completely fucked. And so I let Wally finish doing what he was doing, and he ate the, he ate the head and the beak, and I'm like, we're done. I don't want to take you into the vet, so you're done eating this thing. And so I grabbed it and threw it in the garbage. I'm like, you 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 went for the head, the beak first. Nice. Of all things. Yeah. And it's like, so if I if you get a perforated fucking intestine, I have to bring you to the vet again, pay the fucking bills. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, well, yeah, it's expected of me. No, fuck you. He's a thousand. He can't do yeah. he's doing that anymore. Yeah. Well, he's, he's at least 16 years old. Yeah, he's a thousand. He can't be doing that anymore. But hey, that was two two and a half weeks ago. And like, he's fine. And like, yeah, he's got like, no geez. fucking teeth. Like, I want to know how he does. No, that. he doesn't. He has, he has no front claws. We didn't do that, but like, yeah. he's got no front claws and he's got half his, or about a third of his teeth left. Yeah. And he still killed a fucking morning dove. I'm like, how the fuck, how does that he's work? Big, though. He's got that going for him. He's big, but he's, he's like, he's losing more mass as he gets older. Yeah. But he's like, yeah, he's a big cat. Like he's a big cat. He's a big like his his size and everything, but like like how are you the one that gets a fucking complete morning dove out of a pine tree? Yeah, because if Remington jumps, he'll throw the Earth's gravitational pull out of whack. So Remington, <laughs> it's here's the thing: when he jumps, it's funny as fuck to watch. So if he's outside, like we got those maple trees out there, you've seen yeah. half the time he makes the jump and then he just gets right down again. The other half, he tries to jump and he is too fat for his own good. And he just slides down the tree and he's like, I love it, Paris. I need to go under the deck so nobody can see me. Yeah. And then it's like, even in the house, it's like, he's like trying to jump up on a windowsill, right? I'm like, are you going to make that one, buddy? Are you going to make <laughs> that jump? And he's like, looking at me like, Prow! you know, because he's very vocal. Yeah. And I'm like, are you going to make that one? Are you going to make that one? And he'll be like, doing the whole like, working up to it shifting his weight around yep. yeah <laughs> and then <laughs> half the time again he makes it up there and he just sits there and like chatters at birds and shit and like rabbits and stuff outside the other half he'll try to jump and this is maybe a foot and a half <coughs> you, you know the window sills in my house yeah. are not that hot they're not that high yeah and um he'll maybe jump that and he won't make it he'll be like <laughs> and then he'll claw it drop down and then he'll just like walk away and i'm like dude Come on, what are we doing yeah. here? Yeah. So, but yeah, I mean, it's I get it's it. cats are fucking insane. Like before, I met my wife. Like I hated cats. I was like, they're fucking like for the most part. Yeah. I was like, they're fucking sneaky. They're obnoxious. They're not cuddly. They're not whatever. And then since having met her like seven fucking years ago, I'm like, okay. Yep, I get it. I get it. And uh, you've been here, you like you've seen our four fucking dysfunctional yeah. fucking cats. Yeah. And um, but they're they're funny as shit. Like because they they're, are. They're, they're all different. Like they're all completely different. And then the, the yes, weasel horse are. is also completely different. And goddamn, I get it's the weasel horse. I, get, I get along with all of them except for the big one. He's kind of dumb and he's terrified of everything. Wally. No, 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 my cat. Oh, your cat. Okay. Because I got Oliver, and Oliver was the first cat. That was Paige's cat. And um, he's like six. And then we got Pippin. And Pippin's like one and a one, just a little over one. And then we got Lady. Lady's like seven. Yeah. But she would have probably been sent to the pound if we didn't take her because it was a people that were moving that couldn't take her with. Yep. And we got a little Victor who is Victor is he was born in like July. Oh, so he's still a kitten. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's very small. He, I mean, he eats a fuck ton. So he's actually kind of big for his age, but he's, he's going to be small. So 
Well, so like with Chester, with chesticles, like yeah, we he he ate because like when we, when we got him from the shelter, he had been fucking mauled by something. Yeah, they found him and his leg was all fucked up because he got mauled and like barely escaped. And then so they they patched it up and everything, and he was tiny. And then we gave him food and he just fucking ate. But then his body's somewhat normal size, but his head just has not grown. So he's a little cat. Yeah. But like, yeah, it's just fucking hilarious. Anyway. Um, yeah. Um, I'm going to fucking probably take off. And Sounds uh, good. Yeah. And no, it's a good stream. Bad nobody else showed up. We had good plans. Well, you know, Steven the Boomer. Yeah, I get it. Couldn't but figure it, was it cool out. To see the Belgians, the Belgian shit. You don't see. Yeah, no, I, I came across that today, and I was like, yeah, the Belgians, like especially early war. Yeah, we got to that cover was like, a lot of stuff. We got to talk about the Belgians. We got to talk about how shitty the 1911 is. We did, and it's yeah. yeah. I mean, it's it's a fucking heavy ass, fucking bulky ass pistol. And I, I don't know how they make it worse, even from like the 1908, with like its contained recoil spring. And not having to deal with a fucking bushing, you know? Right, yeah. The, like, the 1911 yeah. is literally like three or four fucking steps down from the immediate model that was before. Yeah, but it's American design. So it was a lot of shit. That's why the, the, everybody was like, oh, the 1903, yeah, they had to pay Maserati. Well, they did for a bit, and they were like, well, it's actually not the same thing, so fuck you. And also, like, we won this fucking war, so no, it was before that. It was, it was like, like 1912 or 13. They were like, Yeah, it's because it's literally not a Mauser action, like, everybody says it is. The 1903 with the, with the fucking separate fucking firing pin design, it's, it's, it's based off of it. Yeah, sure. Yeah, it's like if you slammed a Mauser 1893 and a Craig Jorgensen together. Yeah, but the Craig Jorgensen has got a fixed firing pin. It's like a one-piece firing pin. Yeah. The 1903 is not. I know, but it's like, imagine if you took a, an 1893 Spanish yeah. Mauser and a fucking Craig Jorgensen, you slammed them together. That's how you get the 1903. And then you made it just like the Craig Jorgensen where it's cocking open. Yeah, and that that's basically it and a couple other things. But it's like, it's not a Mauser. It's like, it's similar, sure. The safety yeah. similar, of course, but like that's it's about really the only not. thing. Other than yeah. that, it's a two lug rotating bolt fucking cock on open action. Correct. Yep. And that's the thing is like, and also I was talking with Steve, who was supposed to be on tonight, but like um he he went through um basic in the eighties. He swears he had him until M sixteen. And really? I said, No, you didn't. No, you didn't. And I was like and, and, and we we got into like a it was it was it wasn't like a heated fucking angry thing it was just like a friendly like I said okay get me any of the government contracts physical evidence and I'll I'll I'll, I'll bet you a, a gentleman's bet of a dollar that I'm right that Mattel never made anything it didn't happen well that's one thing but yeah, yeah. he's like no I swear I know what I saw and I'm like yeah you ever heard no, of Man don't. Mandela effect yeah no you don't I was like. Millions of people swore they saw JFK getting shot live on national television in 1963 when the Zapruder film didn't come out until the 70s, 12 years yep. later. So there's just that. Yeah, Mattel, Mattel has even, because it became such a big thing where Mattel's like, Mattel literally went like, no, we didn't. I know, I know. Yeah. And I was like, show me the government contracts because they would be public record at this point. Yep. Show me one fucking photo well we didn't have cell phones then did you have cameras no steve didn't say this by the way this is just like me like yeah. arguing with boomers yes, in the comments soldiers definitely had fucking cameras. i'm like did you have a camera well, no reply yeah and i'm like no, yeah mattel, so you didn't have cell phones but you had cameras never contracted with mattel and mattel never made things and they've come on it, it was a fucking because... trope it was a fucking it was a trope Started by people because they're like, oh, it feels like it was made by Mattel because it's plastic, right? Well, fiberglass, but like they're like, oh, yeah. it's plastic. Okay. And then that in itself got regurgitated so many fucking times to the point where people in the 80s that went through basic, it's like, no, Harrington Richardson and uh, 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 GM Hydromatic made A1 Receive. receivers yeah. in the 80s, late 70s and 80s for basic trainees. Okay. 
but hey, I swear it was a Mattel logo. I, I know what I saw. It's like, but you didn't. I'm There's like, one Mattel receiver in, and it was a guy that custom made it and put their logo. Oh yeah, on. and he made it, he made a spoof video on it, which is great. Yeah, I know that. Literally yeah. serial number one, and he did it as a joke. And people took it serious. They're like, "Yeah, I fucking told you." It's like, did you look at the serial? Did you? Figure out the guy was being sarcastic the whole way fucking yeah, through. Yeah, it's a it's a fucking joke. Yeah, it's just like so. Anyway, that's that's my that's my fucking. Crusade. I'm like again, show me the government contract or any kind of uh, photographic any documentation evidence, or anything. photographic evidence at all. At all, and I'll and I'll I'll, I'll go. I was wrong. Okay, mm-hmm. until then, it's a fucking myth. It's a fucking boomerism, big time. And it's no, I don't buy it because they never fucking did it. Yep. I know the manufacturers of the fucking M16 rifle, you know, and it's like, and so does everyone else. So, yeah. But anyway, that that that's just one myth that's yep. perpetuated among fucking so many. So, anyway. Oh fuck! I got the hiccups. Oh. Um. I know Dan what I Man saw. The Legend, thanks a lot for the fucking super chats. Appreciate that. I hope this was uh My fun. favorite part was where the guy that had the Barrett 50 cal in Vietnam. Well, fuck that pig another time. Yep. Jesus Christ. I mean, M2 looks a lot like a Barrett, right? I mean, it's the same caliber. Mm-hmm. And if it's 800 yards away and you squint. Well, a Mattel M16 is the same caliber as a Hydromatic or a Harrington Richardson or a Colt or a whatever, right? Yeah, I thought the only Mattel M16s that existed were those little light up. The Marauders? Color. Yeah. Yeah, that. Uh, it's John called Wayne the Mattel Marauder. On the, it's called yeah, the Mattel the Marauder. Marauder. And that, yeah. that's where that joke came from. And it became a fucking. They're boomerism. not even the same proportions as an M16. No. Nope. So, but yeah, I, again, I, I offered, I said, I'll do a gentleman's bet of a dollar. If you can provide actual fucking evidence. Dude, at that point, it's like, I'll bet you everything you have. No, 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 no. I, I never bet anything more than a dollar. That's what I do. You know this because we've done it before. Dude, I will trade. I will take everything you own in your family and like an IOU for a hundred sexual favors. If I know I'm correct. And I'm correct, but I still have principles and I still have values. And therefore, it's always a dollar. Dep- no, 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 no. Mine is always like, if you're going to choose to die on this hill, you better realize that some hills can be made out of bodies. But here's the thing is, he's not the only one. He doesn't need to be. Hills are made out of bodies. Yeah. yeah. You and I differ. You better be willing to die for what you believe in. Because if I you believe, don't I believe, fucking believe in this. If I'm proven right and we bet a dollar and I get a dollar from somebody and I go and I throw it into a fucking pop machine and I get a fucking soda and go, cool. I think that's more of a fuck you than trying to do violence and like take the fucking family out and, you know, make a fucking further hill out of bodies. Like, I think that's a bigger fuck you. Is it not? Yeah. I don't ever expect anyone to actually pay, but it's like, I will bet your entire existence. Well, I've had, here's the thing is why I do gentleman bets is because I know I'm going to get paid and I have been, we've done a lot of gentleman bets of just $1. That's all I'll ever bet on something as trivial as this. Okay. I'll bet $1 and I've been paid a lot. I've also had to pay out a few times. So let's be, let's be real fucking honest here. I've had to pay out a couple of times because I'm like, okay, I spoke before I knew everything. You were correct. Yeah, I just don't make a bet unless I'm 100 percent sure. Well, no, that's the way I do it too. But like, yeah, it's only a dollar because I don't yeah. want the other person to fucking have resentment towards me because I took everything from them. That's all right. I accept payment in the form of sexual favors. Well, we know you do. Yeah, <laughs> that's the way to do it. They never lose value. It's been consistent since the beginning of time. Yes. So anyway, um, um, good fucking stream. Thanks to everybody for joining us. Dan, the man, the legend. Thanks for the super chats. Thank really you for the money, that. sir. We appreciate you greatly. Yeah. Sorry, Danny. We're, we're just signing off. We've been, we've been, at it oh. so, yeah. 
It's it's all right. You can you can rewatch it. It's well, I will glade you. I did I didn't I didn't do any of the pictures that Steve sent me because um. We'll just wait I, for I, Steve I, to be on. Yeah, I prom I promised him that I would just wait till he's on. Yeah, we'll have to we'll have to wait and have him. And I I literally didn't look at them. I like I I I just threw them in a file. I saved them into yep. a file. So yeah, they're still oh, good. Danny, uh, middle finger you. I mean, Danny, it's a thumbs up, you fucking penis. That is not a thumbs up. That is a thumbs up. Is it? It's have tiny. another drink, Ray! All right. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for watching, everybody. And um, yeah, we'll see you next time.